this is a review of my LS MT125. Uh, this is a 25 horsepower um, subcompact tractor. Um, I bought this about a year ago, um, August 2020. I've got almost 60 hours on it. Uh, I did my 50 hour service uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, just kind of wanted to show you around and show you what I like and what I don't like. Uh, first off, this is my first tractor, my first subcompact tractor, my first tractor of any kind, outside of a lawn tractor, which I don't really think counts. But, um, so I looked around for a couple months, did some research, watched a whole lot of YouTube videos, um, and settled on this. There was an LS dealer in the town I lived in, like right outside, and I went and talked to them, and I think they had a reasonable deal on this, and I ordered it, and it came last August. And uh, came the loader, um, which has, I believe, a thousand pound, a little over a thousand pound lift capacity. Um, I believe that the LL 1101, I, they rate this uh, as I think 900 something, but I believe that's because they assume that you're going to have the skid, the skid steer quick attach, which is actually a mini skid steer quick attach um, plate on here, which lowers the uh, lift capacity. I believe that's why they, they rate it slightly under a thousand pounds, but you know, with the standard bucket, which is essentially the same as the, the bucket that came on the LL 1100. Um, you know, I, I don't see any other reason for the slight decrease in lift capacity other than they factor in the non-existent on this particular tractor, uh, mini skid steer quick attach. So anyway, um, 25 horsepower, uh, it's got maybe 900 something, uh, pounds on the, the rear lift. Now I have a, uh, Harbor Freight tier, uh, three point um I forget what they call these <laughs> the quick attach yeah something like that one of those i got one of those um and i don't actually have any three point implements right now but in the future i want the box blade and i'm thinking about uh maybe creating my own weight rack um something out of maybe some concrete and then big Tupperware container and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of do it up so it fits in the, uh, the three point. Um, so yeah, it's a Yanmar, uh, 1.3 liter, uh, three cylinder diesel. Um, it is about 25 horsepower, 20, 24.7, I think anything over 25 horsepower, um, after 2017, I believe it has to have, um, DEF or, uh, the, um, DPF, um, to meet the emissions. You know, most manufacturers do. I think Mahindra still gets away with, I believe, just an EGR without any, uh, DEF or DPF. But, um, so here's, here's, in this particular model and there's a there's a few of these uh, subcompacts they have the engine is backwards where the the front of the crankshaft is here by the operator platform and you see the fan and in the rear is just the uh the flywheel and they have the shaft running from the crankshaft you can see here running all the way to the back uh, just kind of a little bit different but it saves uh i guess it saves space you know for the radiator Otherwise, the hood would have to be much taller here. And uh, it also sucks in air here by your feet. Comes through here. There's a pre-filter pre uh, filter screen here. Blows out this way. So when you're working in the summertime, all the hot air is blowing away from you as opposed to in your face, which is kind of nice. Um, I believe that... Kubota also has this arrangement. Um, let me think. Uh, John Deere does not. John Deere has 
engine was flipped 180 degrees and goes front to back. Um, and uh, I know Bobcat has a front to back. Um, I think there's a TYM or uh, you know, another, another variant in like Branson or something like that that has it in this configuration as well. So that may be something that you might be interested in. Um, if you plan to do a lot of work out in the summertime in an open station, uh, getting hit with uh, hot air might not be your thing. Um, it's pretty easy. I did the 50 hour service, which includes the fuel filter, the air filter, the oil filter, and the transmission filter and hydrostat filter, which are underneath there. Um, I went, instead of going to the LS dealer, they have uh, the Baldwin filter equivalents on eBay from an LS dealer. And, you know, it was about $50, $55, I think, for the, the filters. And Baldwin is a very good filter manufacturer. And it came with one LS filter for the hydrostat or the transmission. And that is, I, I guess, that Baldwin didn't have a cross-reference for that particular one. So that's actually an LS-branded filter. And I'm running a 15W40 uh, Rotella in this. I changed the, the engine oil as well as the hydrostat oil, which is uh, the mobile Delvac, I believe. Um, GL4 gear lube and hydraulic fluid all in one. Um, it's been a great little tractor. Uh, I have had zero issues with it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that uh, any little issues I've had with this. No, no, I keep it I keep it greased. Um, it's never failed to start. Never, never, uh, never left me stranded. Um, I don't have a lot of road use on it. It's all pretty much on the property. So, but where I used to live, I, I took it down the street every once in a while and kind of ran it at a wide open throttle just to get things going. Uh, the PTO speed is 29.33 RPM. So, and again, I don't have an attachment for the PTO, but you're gonna put the throttle idle, turn on the PTO, and then raise it up to where the RPM is approximately uh, 29.33. And that's going to make your rear output PTO shaft turn at 540 RPM. Um, I think 3100 RPM is the, uh, the governor on this particular engine. Um, it's it's 31 something RPM. So, and at that RPM in high range, it's got a two range hydrostat, low, medium, or low, neutral, and high. Um, in high range, at full throttle, it goes about 10 miles an hour, 10.1 or something like that. Um, so if you need to go down the road for something, uh, you know, it's quite doable. That's a, that's a pretty fast run. Um, low range is quite a bit slower, uh, big reduction there, but it'll spin all four wheels effortlessly in, uh, on the dirt in low range if you, you know, you're up against an obstacle with the bucket. So and there's a lot of torque in the low range. And then uh, it's got the selector, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Um, these are straight cut gears. So if it binds when you're going from two to four, reverse, uh, four to two, then you just move, press on the hydrostat panels a little bit, and move the tractor ever so slightly, and then it'll go right in. Um, but you want to use two-wheel drive, of course, on the pavement, because otherwise you're going to tear up your front axle. It's not very good because everything is binding. Um, but uh, I use four-wheel drive quite a bit. I don't have these tires loaded, so the rear end can get a little bit light with uh, a load in the bucket. Um, so it's always a good idea to use four-wheel drive when you're doing loader work. So that way, if you need to hit the brakes and the, un the, proper the unproperly loaded tractor uh, shifts its weight forward, you still have brakes because the front axle is still engaged, right? So there's only brakes inside the hydrostatic transmission. There's a wet, wet brake system. 
and uh, so yeah, if you're not in four wheel drive, you won't be stopping. So it could be dangerous if you live on a hill, if you're working on hills. Uh, I live in Texas, so there's few hills here, um, but there's still some transitions on the property. Uh, you know, if you go down a slope and the, the way the tractor shifts, like it's it's always good to have that extra confidence of uh, the four wheel drive. Uh, the loader and the bucket weigh about 450 pounds, I believe. I think the, the loader itself is 360 and the bucket is like 100 and something. So four 460-ish, I think is a good estimate. Um, so I, I actually haven't taken this loader out. I use it all the time. Um, I'm always moving wood. I've got uh, like car parts and and crap to move. Um, I just I find so many little uses for this thing. Uh, there was a little sinkhole that developed over on the other side of the yard uh, the other week, and I just went in the backyard with this thing, got two scoops of uh, fill, and uh, patched it right up. You know, just little things like that. Uh, I don't own a wheelbarrow, so this is kind of like my uh, my motorized wheelbarrow. Um, pulled a log out of the, the tree line yesterday. Yeah, you get creative when you have a compact tractor. Um, you tend to imagine things that you wouldn't otherwise use a tractor for, and you find efficient ways to accomplish tasks. It's a lot of fun. Um, and this LS, you know, I, I hadn't ever owned another brand, so this is my first experience, like I said. But I'm very happy with uh, with the particular engineering of this tractor. I feel it's it's pretty nice. And I've watched a lot of other videos and a lot of other reviews of different manufacturers online. And uh, I think the build quality on the, these are really good. And the uh, the specs, the capacities, as far as uh, lifting, it's in the it's in the high percentage. It's in the top tier of this uh, frame size. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a great little tractor.